Okay, everybody, welcome to this uh, session on small talk. Um, I can see people are still entering the room. So we'll just give people uh, a few seconds just to just to enter the room and then we'll get started. Um, just while we're wait, just while we're before we start, I hope you can all find the chat function on your computers if you can. Um, probably at the bottom or the top of the screen you're looking at. Uh, maybe you can just pop, just write in the chat box where you are. Where are you at the moment? Which, uh, which country or which city? Belgium, the first one. Munich, the second one. London, Nottingham, Belgium, Germany, Berlin. A lot of people from Belgium today. Stuttgart. Belgium, we've got a very strong Belgium contingent. Uh, Barcelona, great, welcome. Berlin, Germany, Toulouse, France, okay. More people from Belgium. This is great. Okay, keep them coming. Um, I can see a lot of people are in the room um, and it's super. Just put in the chat box where you are from Ukraine, welcome. And, if, and remember when you're putting things in the chat box, because I'm going to ask you to put quite a lot of things in, make sure you have the setting all panelists and attendees that's what it says in english all panelists and attendees if you want everybody to read it if you want only me to read it then all panelists super great so let's make a start if you look at the title of the talk here small talk a giant step to better relationships at work does the title remind you of anything in particular do the three words small giant and step remind you of anything if it does write it in the chat box the three words small giant and step aha andrea h okay it's coming in moon landing armstrong excellent that's exactly what i was getting at so on the for some of you this might seem like ancient history but on the 20th of july 19 69 the american astronaut neil armstrong put a foot on the moon and famously declared that's one small step for man one giant leap for mankind so we've taken that and combined the idea of small talk which sounds like something small with something which is big a giant step by the way here's a question does anybody know which foot he put on the moon first right or left No, that's an honest answer. Okay, good. Couple of people, have, people are putting left or left question mark. According to the information I found, it was indeed his left foot. Okay, so let's get started properly. Um, as you can see, my name's Ian McMaster. I'm the editor-in-chief of um, a magazine called Business Spotlight. Business Spotlight is one of the magazines published by Spotlight Verlag, Spotlight Publishing House. Um, in um in we're based in munich somebody says there's no audio can you hear me other people can you hear me i guess you can or she wouldn't have answered my questions um so it might be a problem there with your setting the person who said that um yeah spotlight publishing house in munich we publish magazines and other products to help people learn languages mainly aimed at uh, german speakers um but not only we have magazines to help people learn english general english business english which is the one i'm responsible for um italian french spanish and also uh, which is in great demand at the moment german as a foreign language um, primarily aimed obviously at people who don't have german as a, as a first language but all our products are also aimed at uh, teachers and uh, if you're a teacher or a trainer maybe you could just write teacher or trainer so i get an idea who we have here if you're a teacher or trainer that would be great the Spotlight Publishing House is uh, also itself a part of the Deedsight Publishing Group who are based in Hamburg. So we are a subsidiary of um, Deedsight in Hamburg. So that's who we are. Let me just uh, move on to tell you just a little bit about what Business Spotlight is in case you don't know. Um, as I say, we're a magazine for international business communication in English with the emphasis on communication rather than learning language for the sake of it. It's for doing things, uh, for doing your job in English. So that's the aim of our 
products, uh, these are the main areas we cover, current topics, business communication, careers issues, and also some language issues. Um, a range of products, print, digital, things aimed, audio, exercise workbooks, websites, also help for teachers. Um, there's a magazine that we did uh, last year, um, which obviously was about uh, environmental language. This one here is the magazine which is on sale at the moment, which is a special feature on different aspects of culture, not only country culture, but also um, organizational culture, or it could be departmental culture. Um, that's a special, uh, almost 50 pages on that topic. And the magazine which will be coming out next week, and this is where we come back to our topic of today, there is the cover. So you can see A, that the topic is small talk and B, we have taken the astronaut um, image and put it on the cover of the magazine. That one um, is, uh, goes on sale on Wednesday next week, the 25th of November. And from then, Business Spotlight will be appearing monthly up to now it's been, um, or last year, this year it's been eight times a year. From next week, it's a monthly magazine. Anyway, enough about us. For the moment small talk at work is always useful here's an example again our astronauts one saying to the other nice weather isn't it which obviously is very important if you're up in space or not a, not important at all so i have another little question for you how good do you think your small talk is? Now what I'm going to ask you to do is to give yourselves a number. Now this number, as you see here, is if, if you think you're very bad, it's one. If you think you're very good, it's 10. Or So if you can put that in the chat box, a number just for yourself, between one and 10. Some people say it depends. Yeah, of course it depends. It depends how we feel, what mood we're in, who we're talking to. Do we feel comfortable? Wow, we've got everything here from, uh, literally from, I think, I think three was the lowest size. 6.7, says Marco. That's a very, you must be an engineer. That's a very exact figure. Okay, uh, let me just add them up. Quickly do a, okay, the average there was 6.54. And I'm joking. Okay, so we have a wide range there of, um, marks that you've given yourself some of you feel quite comfortable others seem to think that you that you could be better by the way i should say if you have questions at any time during this session uh, just put them in the chat box i'll try to pick them up um or we'll have a we'll have a few minutes at the end where you can ask questions as well so that's quite interesting so you you rate yourself but some interesting comments people saying it depends on the situation maybe who you're talking to are you talking to somebody you know or don't know? How comfortable do you feel? Now, from looking at um, your answers to my first question, where you come from, I think most of you, probably not all of you, but most of you um, either live in Germany or you live in um, surrounding countries. So I'm going to ask you what might seem a, a slightly odd question. How good are Germans at small talk? And we're going to do the same now, same marking system. One is very poor and 10 is very good. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Somebody wrote very poor. You have to break the ice. 10 with enough beer, nice one. Um, very nice. Uh, 4.3, Marco is being very exact again, but he's a lot lower this time than he was last time. Okay, uh, anybody else want to answer that? How good are Germans at small talk? Okay, if you've all put in your answers, then, okay, let me say two things there. First, your answers, definitely the average was a lot lower than when I asked you about yourself. Now, I don't know if you're German yourself, whether you, uh, ah, interesting, if you know German, they do fairly well. Okay, so, but on the whole, your answers were lower than they were before. Now, the second comment I'll make is this. Congratulations to anybody who did not take part in their exercise because they thought it was a stupid question. 
because we are that question was very much in the dangerous area of national stereotyping which is something that we should actually try to avoid because the stereotypes most stereotypes are they're often um, negative and secondly stereotypes of groups of people as a whole don't help us at all in situations where we meet one or a, few, a small number of people from that particular group so um, sorry that was a bit of a trick there um, but I would say take away from that to get away from this kind of national stereotyping um, but let me just say a couple of points more about this from my experience because I'm from Britain originally um, but I've been living in Munich for the last 30 years I now I have dual nationality um, uh, British and German so if I say the Germans I'm now talking about myself as well um, as I said, I don't think these kind of stereotypes are very helpful, but I think there are some points that we can make, and it is this. Um, off, when I, my personal view is that, from experience, is that German-speaking people, I don't see any difference. I see them as absolutely as good at small talk as anybody else. So if I look at my colleagues or friends or see and I see them, they're making small talk the whole time. And what are they talking about when they make small talk? What do you think? What topics? The one for the chat box. <laughs> the first one's the weather. Sports, family, weather, kids, kids, politics. Okay, interesting. Soccer, yeah. Soccer, football. Okay, so basically all the usual topics. House bow, building a house. That's interesting. And of course, at the moment, often it's about... Uh, it might be about the corona situation or whatever so what i say, always say is this actually german speaking people and people in germany are um they're perfectly capable perfectly good at making small talk maybe the difference is this it's it traditionally has not been as common to use small talk in work related situations as it might be in some other cultures that put a lot of emphasis on small talk um, as a way of getting to know somebody so my message when i'm teaching or through the magazine is not to say to people here you're not good at small talk because a i don't think that's true and b it's extremely demotivating but to say there might be situations in which um, you might want to use it more internationally with um, business partners than you maybe traditionally would or would have in your own country. Again, I think this is a partly also a generational thing which is changing. Um, now I will give you two anecdotes. One was when I was teaching at the Adult Education Institute in Munich and I tried to make small talk with a student when she came in on the second evening and I said to her, Maria, how are you? And she said to me, um, not very well. I spent the whole night on the toilet. Now I thought okay that's actually more information than I needed. All I needed to hear from her was uh, fine thanks and you. That would have done. So in a sense I wasn't actually very, I wasn't asking after the details of her uh, medical state or her health. Um, it would have done just with a simple answer. Of course being German myself I'm now trying to adapt and learn to give more details of my medical situation. Second example, I went with a German colleague to two uh, organizations to try to ask them if we could use their offices to hold a, an event. And the first place we went to was the British Council and we spoke to a British woman there and I spent ages making small talk. We had literally had a cup of tea. My German colleague, she thought Ian's never going to get around to asking what we've come here for, which is the room. And of course, what I was doing was very typical sort of British small talk, uh, trying to sort of get to know each other a bit before I put the question. And uh, my German colleague found that slightly odd. We, we went to the second organization. It was actually America House and there was a German colleague and there my German Sorry, there was a German manager there who uh, we were talking to and my German colleague simply, we walked through the door, we said hello and as she sat down she said we'd like, to we'd like to have one of your rooms for an event and of course I felt uncomfortable but here were two Germans, actually two Bavarians speaking to each other, or two, yes, two Bavarians, so um, you know different ways of doing things, uh, there can be differences. What's the message of all this? Well we need to think internationally and 
we need to act appropriately in whatever situation we find ourselves in internationally. But as I say, um, my tip would be maybe for some people uh, in, in traditional German working situations, there might be cases or there will be cases internationally where you'll need to maybe use small talk more than you normally would. Okay, now, why do we make small talk at work? What is the reason why we do it? Again, the, if you can put something into the chat box, why do we make small talk at work? To break the ice? Be friendly, get comfortable, okay. avoid silence, stress relief, connect. Mm -hmm. Take a break. Now that's a good one, take a break. Feel more comfortable, ice breaking comfortable bored <laughs> it could be yeah, it could be we're bored that's like taking a break i guess to look for a relationship set up a relationship any more um find a purpose gosh that's a that's a that's a pretty high goal but it could be establish contact inviting guests network yeah very interesting okay so a lot of it a lot of what you've put there is about connecting in some way interesting somebody said bored yeah sometimes we just want to take a break we're just bored and we want to do something else um and that's an interesting point i'll come on to in a minute about the timing of small talk um but most of your com most of your comments did revolve in some way about a contact or a connection or a relationship and i i think there are three main reasons actually why small talk is important at work um and the first one is relationships building relationships um, three main reasons. I mean, there are other ones that you said. The second main one is building relationships. And you've now guessed what the third main one is. That is building relationships. So in a work situation, as well as maybe wanting a break with and taking a break and being bored and wanting just to chat about something else with our colleagues. But if we're dealing with business partners um, in particular, one of the function of small talk where appropriate is to build a relationships and in some cultures this is extremely important on the whole people like doing business with people they like they also quite like doing business with people who they feel in some way are in some way a bit like them so this relationship building uh, is extremely important in an international business and in some cultures it's absolutely essential without that um, without that relationship which could come through small talk and which could involve talking about topics that you wouldn't necessarily in your own culture in your own business in your own country maybe some countries put extreme value on d details of family be, to assess are you what kind of person are you so extremely important it helps small talk can help um, to build trust to build bonds to build connections between people this is what this is the positive function that, that it can have. Um, and here you see a kind of diverse group of people and we have the, the um, sort of the archetypal water cooler here, but of course it doesn't only take place there, it can take place in person, it can take place uh, increasingly, of course, at the moment we're um, using virtual media to communicate, but even there um, it's quite possible and essential and possibly even more important to use small talk to build uh, bonds to create trust to find out a bit about the other person um, okay now you've of course you've seen this already this is the cover topic in the in the um, in the new magazine which is coming out and this is the and you saw that picture already but this is the first the, the double page of a four-page article by Deborah Capras in which she describes it as we say in the headline about creating social capital so again these connections between people this is a key aim and small talk as well as other things can help us to um, create bonds other things that can help us to create bonds are competence um, showing and displaying our competence also our reliability but using small talk and the article has seven key tips for making your small talk more professional um okay mary writes if you want to fight your biggest enemy you should know him yes exactly they say keep your friends close and your enemies even closer uh, get to know your enemies whoever they might be and however you're defining them so i'm just going to go through these um seven tips very quickly if you um, have any comments or questions or if you disagree 
then uh, as I say you've all most you've all have found the chat box uh, now. So these are the seven points that we pick up into the article. In the article, you can read about them in more detail. Um, and we also give examples of the kind of language you can use. The first one is obvious. It's just finding connections, asking how somebody is. Also maybe highlighting the fact that um, you might have had the same experience as somebody else. So if somebody says something, oh, you know, me too. Oh, me neither. So through common experience or common beliefs, you're making connections. So that's one uh, thing you can do. Second thing is uh, timing. This is interesting, but there's often people think that um, it goes like this. You meet somebody, you make small talk, and then you move over to business. And, you know, you learn, okay, in this country, they want four and a half minutes of small talk. And in this one, it's only one and a half. But it's always very linear, as if small talk always comes first, then comes the real business. Whereas somebody mentioned earlier taking a break well yes imagine you're in a video conference with somebody or a video call and you're talking about business why not at some point just kind of you know you see drop out of that into a into some small talk which helps to build the relationship and then you go back into business so don't think that the timing is it always comes first um but it could be that you know to get it started you notice something you want to comment on of somebody's you see a picture that they have or you um you know, you, 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 you like, you like, for example, you know, the way they've, uh, on, on a video call, you say, yes, exactly. You see, you see a picture on the wall behind them or something you want to comment on. So timing, playing by the rules. This is the question, what you should talk about. Can you put in the box, which things you shouldn't talk about? What shouldn't you talk about in small talk? What topics? <laughs> Sex says, Okay, we won't read your name out. Politics, religion, religion, finance, money, politics, Brexit, <laughs> Corona, drug abuse. Yeah, okay, salary, money, big issue, salary. Don't mention the war, Trump. Okay, American elections. Now, obviously, never talk about Brexit. Well, actually, death. Okay, so these are big topics. Now, again, people sort of say, people say, you know, um, that you, there's certain things you should avoid, like, you know, re yes, religion, sex, money, corruption, um, whatever. You could be um, politics, death and taxes. Yeah, actually, of course, these are all fantastically interesting topics. If we exclude every interesting topic, the small talk is going to be quite boring. But the key message, of course, is to know what is appropriate in the context. So, for example, you could say to somebody, um, you know, if you want on politics, if you're interested, oh, I hear you've got election, an election in your country. That's an open question. That gives the person a chance to talk about it if they want to. If they're not interested in politics, they won't. So the question I think often is not that you say, do talk about these, don't talk about that. The question is more, how do you talk about them? And just being sensitive and also not being afraid to say, for example, that you'd rather not talk about it, as, as in that example there. Um, stories are good. Um, stories of uh, yeah oh point here from evan people dis people can bond over things they dislike yeah that's true uh, it can be true it's the sort of common enemy thing and of course that can be destructive if it's taken too far um and you become just you know, very negative but it's true that we often start small talk with kind of negative things telling stories is uh, can be good but i mean the point about stories is ideally short and sweet of interest not all about yourself and uh, highlight something in it that's of interest to the other person so it doesn't just become a kind of an ego show and that's a, that's a um that's sometimes a problem um try to try to also to recognize when the other person has lost interest in uh, your story um showing interest in others i mean it sounds obvious but i mean again the the way you can what's a good way of showing interest in other people very simple way Um, adding to the story, yep, it could be adding something, <laughs> remembering somebody's name, asking questions, yes, exactly, nodding, smiling, okay, active listening, showing signs, but questions, 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 if, if people ask you questions, you generally feel that you have interest, people who just talk and never ask a question about you, um, and we all, you know, then it just becomes a kind of a monologue, yeah, body language, all these paralingual or, or non-lingual things can be, play a role too, um re remembering if you're actually interested in somebody you remember things you remember the fact that you've got children i mean um you're not only the fact you've got them you might remember you might even remember how many or what their names are or other details so it actually just you could 
key business contacts, you might even note down a few things about them because we can't remember everything. Um, but it does, it does, um, we do feel good if people, we have the feeling people have remembered something of what we told them before. So, and of course, knowing when to move on is an important, uh, is an important uh, thing as well. Um, that transition back to work, as I said before, that knowing when somebody else has lost interest in what you're saying and not just going on with yet another story. Here's a simple tool that we have in the, in the, in, in Deborah's article, you know, a kind of a, 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 that you could use as a very simple sort of mind map type thing where you take a topic that you think might be interested in to improve your vocabulary on that topic. Or those of you that are teachers, trainers could use this with your students, take a topic. People like to talk about films and series, then use the mind map to build up different genres and then different ways of, des of describing them. Because actually one of the keys to small talk is having the vocabulary to talk about it. And that's a very simple tool that you can, that you can, um, use um, whether it's music travel sport current affairs whatever whatever it is um, say if you've got the vocabulary you'll you'll be a more effective small talker combined obviously as I said before with uh, appropriateness so uh, five minutes left does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask or comments um, pop them in the uh, in the chat box Any feedback? How are you today? Yes, I'm not sure if that's a question to me or an example of what you could say, but both of them is very nice. I'm fine today, thank you. Um, what do you do when somebody said something inappropriate? Well, that's a good, very good question. I mean, you, I mean, I think there's an individual thing. There, what, there are various strategies, aren't there? I mean, and they can all be they can all be justified in different situations. I mean, one strategy is simply to ignore it. Another strategy is to um, is to move on to another topic, and um, uh, Julia, I'm not sure whether the presentation will be uploaded. We'll find the answer to that. Um, and to change to change the topic um, is another way. And of course, if you feel it's important enough that you actually want to say, I don't, I don't feel that's that's appropriate. Um, as I say, we don't feel comfortable about, about talking about that. Then, of course, you're quite within your rights to to say that. Um, good. Uh, how to elegantly round off the small talk? Yes, I think it's good to have one or two phrases that you've, that you've learned. I mean, anyway, is a good transition phrase to get to the next, uh, to another topic or, um, to say something like, oh, by the way, how's work at the moment? Or, okay, shall we, okay, shall we look at the project, uh, papers now or something? So, yes, I mean, again, in, in our article, you'll find numerous examples of these kinds of phrases. What do you do when someone talks over the top of you? That's a good point. Um, and we, again, in the article, we mentioned the exa example of Kamala Harris, who's, who should be the next vice president or will be the next vice president, who in the debate with Vice President uh, Pence simply said to him, she simply said, um, I'm talking, I'm talking, Mr. Vice President. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, but again, phrases to say, um, sorry, could I just finish what I was saying? I mean, this is typically, I, maybe happens more in meetings than in small talk, or, or, but it can be. And maybe the message is for yourself, just to say to yourself, you won't talk over other people. You'll let them finish as well. Set a good example. If you want to know um, more about um, small talk, then... Um, we have another talk at this conference from uh, at this conference from my colleague uh, Jan, who um, on Saturday at four o'clock will be talking about small talk, particularly in the context of e-learning, um, because we have um, if you, we have a we have a new. Um, e-learning course that we've launched on this topic of small talk. And if you look bottom right, it says, Jetzt mehr erfahren unter, find out more. And then the cliffhanger, it's not there. So you'll have to come on Saturday to find out where. Um, and Jan will um, talk to you about e-learning in the small talk context. Yes, good. He will be talking in probably in English or a mixture. Jan is perfect in both languages because he's, he's half German and half Welsh. So you can talk to him in either language. Um, uh, but I think he'd probably start in English and then take it from there, depending on the 
participants. Yeah, somebody commented that if you say anyway the whole time, it does. It, it sounds like you're not interested in the other person and just want to get on to something else. So, like everything, you have to be careful and use these use these terms um, carefully and not and not say the same uh, phrase the the whole time. How can you break a weird science? Yeah, silence. Yeah, again, I would say depends on the situation, doesn't it? Depend on the depends on the on the silence maybe you want to have a couple of topics up your sleeve that you can use in cases of weird silences um, but of course silence is not always weird um, you know I have a friend or I have a colleague who, who had a Scandinavian friend and uh, they sat there together and didn't talk for a while when my friend visited uh, my colleague visited the, the Scandinavian in his house and they said and when he did say something the other person said Ken, we're friends, we don't have to talk. So silence is not uh, always a negative. Anyway, we have come to the end of our uh, time. So we should, uh, we should stop there. If you have any questions, please contact me. There's my email address. And uh, thank you all very much to coming, uh, for coming here. Now, Jan is the only other talk from Spotlight, but the Spotlight, as a publishers, we are around at the conference as exhibitors. We're also media partner at the event. We have been for a number of years. Uh, we're great supporters of Ex Expo Lingua. And I think, um, you know, it's new for everybody this year as an online event. We were always happy to meet in Berlin, but um, it's been great online so far. So uh, yes, we will be around Spotlight for Lag. And as I say, if you want to contact me directly, there is my email address. Um, thank you all very much for coming. That's the end of this session and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, the coming days at Expo Lingua. Thank you.